patients and sitting here as well this testimony. Um, it's, it's been interesting to hear your questions to others, and I, I have many of those, and I appreciate the questions you've been asking as well. My name is Stephanie Shar, I live in Fitzwilliam. By training, I am a science teacher with a background in environmental science and biology. Um, so thank you for hearing me today. Um, I don't want to read you my testimony, and I'm not going to do that for you, but I've been jotting down notes as I've been listening to others. And the first thing that I found really interesting is that environmentalists used to be called alarmist, and I heard a lot of alarmist claims today in response to this bill, which was very interesting for myself. Um, but I say sound the alarm, because we have a really big problem, and we need to come together and re to work on this. And I heard some people today ask, why does New Hampshire need to be first? Well, why does New Hampshire always need to be last? <laughs> and that's the truth. We're always last. We are the last state to say, let's go check out offshore wind. Well, we need to embrace offshore wind. We need to embrace solar. And if we're worried about the people that are coming to visit from other states not liking the price of our gas, Perhaps you don't realize that we are desperately in need of more EV ports across the state for all the people that are driving in with their electric vehicles and don't have any place to plug them in. I was recently at a conference where I learned that, and this makes some sense, I, I hadn't thought about it that much, that trees at around age 25 really start to absorb more and more carbon. And that the older they get, the more <coughs> that they absorb, which makes some sense, right? And yet, we take trees down, and we plant, and feel really good and pat ourselves on the back about that. So I'm not for advocating for more wood burning. We're going to have that. We live in a rural state where wood burning is common. But I don't think that's about to go off the charts, and I'll tell you why. Um, <coughs> in 2014, the Ned Pipeline, the King Morgan Ned Pipeline, was going to come through my town of Fitzwilliam. And pretty much all the opposition was no pipeline. That was their answer. And I was more or less alone in saying, we have to have an answer. We can't go to people and say, no pipeline without a, what, what do we want? Well, what I say we need is fossil free, six oh three. We need this state to start making a statement here in New England and in other places. We're known as the ones that are left behind. And that has an impact on the business that you're all concerned about. More businesses will come here. More young people will stay here. When they see that the state is making decisions in our best interest for our health and for our future, and that instead of pushing more, more fossil fuels, more fracked gas that is constantly happening in this state from the bottom to the top, those things are temporary, and we're asking people to invest their money in something that they'll be paying for long after it's been outdated. So we need to invest now in renewables for the best interest of all of us. Now, I'm not saying that that doesn't mean that some people that have had family businesses for a very <coughs> long time are going to do well in this change. It's up to all of us, from the bottom to the top, to make this transition and to figure out, to plan, not to stall, but to plan on how we're going to make that transition and to mitigate the problems we have by doing that. And some people are going to be excuse me, be able to transition easily where their jobs working for a fossil fuel company may be transferable. They may be able to work for a solar company. Perhaps not. That might involve retraining. I live in an 1850 house. <clears throat> I have been on the waiting list and waiting and waiting and waiting for help with making my home more energy efficient. <clears throat> Many of you here may be or may know someone who has voted year after year for veggie funds to be reimbursed to people the cost of a cup of coffee, when that money could have already been helping the people at the bottom who need that help that we've heard expressed here today. Those people need help in using less fuel, and we can do that as part of this funding. Um, I've heard a lot of concerns about this tax increasing over the years and what kind of an impact it's going to have on people. I have not heard anyone say that as that tax increases, our fossil fuel use is gonna decrease. And that we're not going to be so upset about that carbon tax as we move away from that. That's part of the plan. And it's a great plan. We're all gonna benefit from it. Some of us are gonna resist it a little more than others, but in the end, we will all benefit from that. Uh, in 20, 
2014 when the MIPS pipeline was going to come through southern New Hampshire, when I would speak to people about solar, they, they knew a little bit about it. Maybe they knew somebody, maybe they didn't know anybody who was interested in solar. I'm a member of the Monadnock Energy Hub, and tonight I'm missing a meeting about solarized Monadnock to be here and speak with you. The <clears throat> town of Fitzwilliam is part of this great incentive plan to help people together. The more people that go solar together, you get benefits from, from companies <coughs> large and small to help them go solar, and people are excited about it. They want it. They want to know more, and they want to know how can we do it, how can we help them, and we can. We can resist or we can help. So I ask you today to consider not only the climate change, but the, the vision that our state has for our future, the image that this state has. <coughs> and to make that decision, knowing that our state will benefit in so many ways from making this decision that include adapting to climate change, include helping our fisheries, include helping the wildlife that's impacted like right bear and moose, cod, shrimp. Those things are already impacted. So I hope that you will support offshore wind and you will support net metering and you will support this bill. Thank you. Any questions for this lady? <coughs> So we have a small core group that's probably about 40 people. And we started just servicing our small area in the Manhattan region. We now network throughout the state. I have gone to um, pipeline trainings and pipeline conferences in Louisiana and in Texas. And so the connections are beyond our membership. We're part of a coalition of over 200 organizations that are working to reform FERC and to reduce the impact of pipelines nationwide. You're welcome. Thank you for your question. I'm rightly proud of the 